All right, I finally got my CNC back into my shop. What a task that was. You should hire as many dodos as you can to help you with this process. Oh, and make sure you get yourself a pallet jack because moving this stuff is almost impossible without it. I use the lifting arm to get the machine onto the stand. Once again, you're gonna need your dodos for this. Actually, go ahead and keep your dodos around for the remainder of this installation. Next, I went ahead and put the monitor stand on with the monitor and installed the chip tray. Now, make sure you put the butyl tape on that goes in between the chip tray and the stand on perfectly. That is a vital step to ensure that you don't have any leaks in between the stand and the chip tray. Super important. Next, I installed a bead of silicone in between the chip tray and the enclosure to ensure that that surface was free of leaks. I called it a night right here. After installing the doors and everything, installing the lights, this was a good stopping point for me for the night. Come back and try it again tomorrow. I love how bright these LED lights are that they install in the top of the cabinet. It just brightens everything up. It looks super nice. I guess it was time to run the machine after all. So here I am just playing with the conversational tool pads a little bit. Just getting my feet wet. Not gonna lie, there was some air cutting going on. <laughs> this was actually my first time setting up a vise and I am aware that you can just put the indicator directly into the spindle, but the tool was already set up, so I just let it ride. One thing I did opt for was a passive probe and once you get the run out taken out of it, the rest of the setup was pretty much a breeze. Just make sure to have a ring gauge. Finally getting to run the Superfly. Went ahead and ran it in both directions to see some things. Just a quick look at my starlet. It's my restoration project. It's missing a lot of parts. Making my first actual chips a couple weeks after receiving the machine, not bad. Didn't run any finishing passes, it's just a prototype. But I did want to check the clearances with this gauge compared to a 3D printed part that I made a couple weeks back. Actually, it fits pretty good in my opinion. I like having a little bit of two-sided tape around the gauge just to hold it in place a little bit better. This was my first time doing window machining. Uh, I think I like it. I think there's a place for it, but now it's time to cut the tabs off of it and slap it in the vehicle. I think it looks pretty good. On to the next project, which is making a housing for the front parking lights for my Starlet. 3D printed, of course, first, and then prototyped in aluminum second. While another prototype for that was printing, I went ahead and made a speed handle for my vise. No super fly for this one. I just wanted a regular old solid end mill finish on this one. Came out pretty good, I think. Okay, since I know the lens fits inside of the housing that I've 3D printed, now it's time to make one out of aluminum. Go ahead and disregard that off cut from my bandsaw in the middle of this part. You know when you have to get it done at the end of that day. All that time spent, you have to have a finished product by the end of the day. First two weeks with this machine and it's going lovely. Can't wait to make more parts in the future.